Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and look what the mailman dropped off today. We have the new Relic Blade starter set, two-player starter set. Once upon a time, I actually did a review for the original two-player box set, and ended up having all kinds of other stuff inside it. I don't think that's the case this time. I believe this is just the new stuff, hopefully. I did have some add-ons, I think. I have to double-check. But in this box, which isn't the most durable, and Sean did let everybody know about that. Sean is in the creator of Relic Blade. We have the two-player campaign. So they have an ongoing link mission thing in there. And they have all kinds of fun illustrations, the cards. Very important, the original ones were all in black and white, but they've been in color now for some time. There is assembly required. I thought they were all like one piece. So there's eight figures inside, and then all the tokens you need as well. Not for babies. What a shame. Yay for California. Now, Relic Blade is a cool little game. And it is nice and compact. Doesn't require a whole lot of tabletop space. No more than a handful of models for both sides. And it plays quite quickly as well. Huh, rules reference cards. And we'll open those in a sec. I'm sure you guys want to see all the goodies, so I'm going to guess that's the good guys and the bad guys. What else we got here? Stuff! Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's this? Alright, so here is the campaign guide. And these are in color. I want to say the original was in black and white. Maybe. Nice photographs in there. Some ideas for painting everything nice little touch so you have color schemes for each of the main people you got a little fluff blurb here such as the warden of justice the champions of corral corral the pig tribes stack card is also there which is kind of a handy dandy little bonus as they get into tactics and ideas of how to use them the marauders those are the lizard men of relic blade Slayers of the Deep. And then we get into the actual campaign. Explanation of the various tokens. Cards, treasure deck, quick start rules. And then we get into the, the rest and then there's a little epilogue telling you about some of the other stuff. This is a nice train set if you guys want to spend the cash for it. Um, it's really cool looking. I have gotten to see it in person. Uh, also of interest, if you want some cheaper stuff, is Tabletop Combat makes a bunch of cool stuff too. So, let's see here. We have all of the tokens. Seem pretty nice and sturdy. I like the artwork on them. They are double-sided. What are these random cards? Okay, the Swarm Lord, I guess. Oh, and the Honor Guard. That's for the Theranic Guard. In the sandwich. So I'm assuming, I'm hoping, I know I ordered these two characters for sure. Maybe they're in these bags. And there we have Mr. Sutter's signature. Not as cool as getting the hardcovers autograph with a little artwork in there. I think I showed those off before. Naturally, mine has the lizards. All right, let's take a look at the figures. Going to the deli. Aha, well, that explains where my add-on people went. They were packaged in there. I'm gonna take a look. I know I do. So this is the Theranic Guard, little dwarf-like person with a nice looking bent blade that needs a little fixing. That's okay, not a big deal. Not a whole lot of cleanup necessary. It's all single piece casting. Nice and easy. And over here we have the Swarm Lord <coughs> on a 40 millimeter base. And he is going to be multi part. And remember, this guy is going to be an add on. He will be available on the website as well. If you've never checked out the website for Relic Blade, well, guess what? You know I'm going to have a link down there for you, too. There we go. Okay. Here we have everybody in the new starter. All eight players. Four for 
the side of good or for the side of bad. A little bit of cleanup necessary on our pig destroyer, not a problem. Looks like he'll fit in quite nicely with the rest of the pigs. Our Iguan Marauder. I think I have the multi-part version. I think he had an optional crossbow he could be equipped with. That was kind of like a precursor to this Kickstarter campaign. Lots of bases. All slotted. And Elf Lady. Our Denizen of the Deep. I think that so far is about the extent of the assembly required, is gluing them on and clipping the little bits of flash between his blades. Our intrepid gnome marksman, markswoman. It's a gnome, I can't tell. Nice little sculpt. Is it the Warden of Justice? Nice looking beard. Saber. What is this, the Plague Guy? We have had quite a few undead models in Relic Blade so far. And I believe this is a thief. So, a nice assortment. Give me a sec. Uh, there's nothing really to build. Um, I'll save the Swarm Lord for later. But let me grab some of my other Relic Blade models and we'll give them a look-see and see how they stack up with these guys. Alright, I grabbed a couple of models from the original starter, like our cleric here, and the thief, and the rogue, along with one of the pigs, just to give you guys a good idea of the size of the models. So our pig here looks to be right in line with his buddies. Iguan. Oh, wait a minute. I have my blue skinned Lotus Blade song here. I dig this model. You can see she's going to fit right in with all of the newbies. And I got to say, even though they are single cast parts, pieces, models, I got to say, at least the models themselves have a nice sense of movement. They don't feel super flat, they're all in various poses. So that's always a plus to see. Um, you know, like our rogue friend here is quite thin and flat, I thought. Even Lotus Blade Song, but at least she has the swirly ribbons there to kind of help with that. Now, yeah, honestly, guys, outside of having to trim off the flash there, you can see on the bottom of a lot of their bases, that's about the extent of work you really need. Uh, they're pretty much good to go and play right out of the box. You've got the rules. You've got rules reference cards included with all the stat cards. Uh, the game is really self-explanatory how to play. I have had a chance to run it a few times myself prior to the pandemic. And I gotta say, it's definitely a cool one. And I'm looking forward to getting this stuff painted so that we can actually probably give it a nice and proper spin. I'm hoping that this summer we were talking about at school having some kind of like special activity classes non-educational related enrichment type activities and i thought this might be a fun one to actually walk the kids through um maybe i don't know i think it might be more fun to throw a bunch of historicals at them and do something like that but that's totally beside the point uh like i said if you've never tried a skirmish game or a war game type game for lack of better words with these style of models i think this is a nice little entry you truly really get everything you need to play the game right there in the box and i can't always say that about a lot of these quote unquote starter sets i guess the only thing that's really lacking if i wanted to get really nitpicky would be actually having terrain uh terrain is something that you know, I guess they could include it. It's like one of those things, either you have it or you don't. There are a lot of inexpensive options. You know, when we were kids, it was like building blocks or Legos and stuff. Uh, that's always certainly an option, but with the advent of 3D printers and paper craft and all that kind of stuff, and I forgot the gnome, so we'll stick her in here to see how tiny she is. Uh, there's a lot of options for stuff like that. So I think 
other than if you don't have access to a lot of, you know, pieces of terrain to use. This is from uh, Printer Monsters, Fantastic Plants and Rocks. Think the cheap buildings. I don't want to say cheap, but uh, inexpensive buildings. I always have floating around in the back here from Tabletop Combat again. Uh, there's a lot of options out there. So I'd say if you're interested and want to dip your toes into the wargaming miniature tabletop skirmish combat type scene, I think getting a set like this is honestly and truly really the way to go. Other than the lack of terrain and maybe dice, but again, it's just six-sided dice. You can source them from crappy games like Monopoly and, you know, <laughs> just do it like that. Uh, I think it truly is a fun way to start it. You've got everything you need. You can split it with a friend. Um, there should be, I haven't opened the cards yet, but knowing what the actual game is like, there should be some treasures in here for you to you know, tweak and adjust your characters and their abilities. So that's definitely an option. And if you really do enjoy the game, um, I absolutely recommend you check out the Vogelands, which was the campaign book, which adds all kinds of extra little things to add to the depth of your game. And like, there's a lot of options in there too. And it was pretty fun. Um, I know I tried playing through it myself just to get an idea how to play the game way back when. Of course, I've forgotten since, but you know, I blame the pandemic for that. As always, I do recommend you take a look at the website for Relic Blade. It has lots of information there. I believe there's even a tabletop simulator mod. I Where did I put the manual? I don't know. I thought I saw something in there. Uh, but like I said, I'll put a link below and you can get your information from somebody much smarter and more informed than me from there. With that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures. Say thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.